What's up, y'all? This is BP. Hey, how's it going, everybody? This is Star Child. It's your boy, Kid Dream. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to Gamer Credits. This is going to be season two level. i sorry, I forgot. Is it three or four? Three. <laughs> it's three. <laughs> hey, man, you hitting the gummies over there, man? Three. That's true. I might need to give him a break. I'll be forgetting things, man. Oh, <laughs> no, man. Let's man. introduce the players. Player one, BP. Hey, kid. What's happening, man? Oh, uh, man. You know, just... Living it up, living it up. You? Uh, hey, man, you know, just laughing at our uh, lost sponsorship for those gummies, man, you know. like, But, hey, other than that, mm. good. But we can't get sponsored by Flintstone gummies? Hold on now, what? Ah, uh, you going the PG route. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah, those I think will be fine. So, we can, you know, we can score that great. But I'm talking about the ones that apparently make kid forget things over here. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Mm. Nice, nice. Mm. That's right, man. Plead the fifth. Anyway. But yeah, everything's good, man. I'm ready to go. Good, 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 good. Then we got player number two, Star Child. What's going on, man? The only gummies I eat are the Lion's um, main gummies. You know, those help with your cognitive um, functions. So anybody that's needing any of that type of help, look into those. Uh, All right. All right. Well, I mean, our conversations go a little different than that. But hey, you know what? We'll keep that on the (laughs) private side. (laughs) We'll roll with that. I guess, uh, guess we're a nutritional uh, podcast now. I mean, why not? Hey. Right? You know, health is important. Extremely. All right. <laughs> and it's like, you got super serious. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> then we have uh, oh. player three. It's your boy, Kid Dream. So before we jump into these gaming <clears throat> topics, let's uh, see if anybody has a gaming moment of the week. Fellas? Starfield. Starfield. BP here with Starfield. That was the gaming moment. Uh, actually, I actually had several gaming moments, but Starfield's the only one I remember right now. <laughs> uh, okay. right. It's more so, and I don't really want to go into a whole lot of it because it's going to turn out to be like a review, and uh, I ain't got we ain't got time for that. So I'll just say that the game is actually su- a lot. It, su- it surprised me. Like it's actually a little bit fun. You know, it's uh, I can see where maybe you know some of the story is kind of like eh. You know, kind of feeling like you kind of been there, done that with that kind of story, the way it's going now. Mind you, I've only been in the game like, I think, four hours. So technically, I'm still like one of those trial players. But <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the story, I mean, it, you know, it's OK. Like, I don't ha- I don't hate the story at all. I think that there's a lot of potential out there, apparently, um, based on where I see things going, where you can kind of uh, just explore different type of storylines and things like that. So that's cool. But what I really like is just the controls. Uh, I think that. To me, anyway, they're like pretty nice and responsive. Uh, the gunplay is fun. Um, the traversal eh, is kind of meh, but I still like the idea of it. You know, I like the idea of the traveling through space and, uh, you know, some of the dog fighting in there wasn't too bad. It was pretty cool. So overall, man, you know, thumbs up to it. And I'm actually excited to see more of what, where it's going to go. And uh, one of the things that I appreciated was it. I didn't feel like it overwhelmed me with a lot of the choices in the dialogue. Maybe that changes mm. as time goes on, but it, from what I saw, I just, maybe there's a couple of times I felt like I had to do that in the conversation. And I was like, Hey, I appreciate that. You know, I appreciate that. It's not like Jade empire where I felt like every line required me to choose out of like five different choices. And I'm just like, at the end of the day, just burned out and I only play like, you know, 30 minutes or so. So it was a good thing. Oh man, just uh, <laughs> just wait until uh, we play Baldur's Gate. Uh, well, and there you go. So you Which probably that'll uh, <laughs> that'll bring me to my game in a moment of the week. Uh, Larian Studios, the developers of uh, Baldur's Gate Three, 
have confirmed that they are working on crossplay between uh, right now PC and PS5 and of course Xbox whenever that version comes out at some point in time. But there will be crossplay available pretty soon, and I am hyped. That is crazy. Like, did you even imagine? Nice. Did you even expect that? Honestly, uh, I, I so honestly, I did a little bit only because. Well, I guess for two reasons. One, Larian Studios is just all about putting their players first and anything that benefits players, they are trying their best to do and accomplish, which I love to see. But also when uh, Baldur's Gate 3 came out, they announced that you could uh, do cross save. So you could play on PC, save your game and then get it again on PS5 and bring that save over to PS5 and, and continue your journey. So Seeing that kind of implementation groundwork already laid down, I kind of had a feeling that uh, Crossway was coming out um, on the horizon. Man, nice touch, yeah, nice sense. touch, man. The boys are winning over there. You know, excellent job. Yeah, yeah, I, I am ecstatic to say the least. All right, good. Yeah, man, hopefully, more gamer developers will follow suit and make um, all their games have the option of crossplay and also co-op. Wouldn't be a bad deal, yeah. but you know, we'll see how that goes, right? <laughs> what about you, uh, Star? No gaming moments, but I can say or give a shout out to my boy Snow for you know taking some time out of his day and show me some ropes on Destiny Two and how to build my my avatar in, in a way where I actually have my armor and my weapons and my mods actually do- doing something instead of my character being so <laughs> um, underdeveloped to the point where I was holding my fire team back and BP would know all about that. So I, I got some pointers. I got some hands on uh, help. And so I basically jumped on the game and I, I can already see the difference. So thank you, Snow. Shout out to you. Appreciate you. And notice how you, you were uh, good. You were that guy in the raid, huh? I, I'm, I'm always that guy because the games I have to play are games that everyone else likes. And so the game that I'm stuck with right now is Destiny 2. God Not dang. a big fan of Destiny 2. But oh, I am now, but I am now feeling like I, I'm, I'm, I'm participating in a level where I can help. So that's, that's where I'm at now. You know what? I was gonna, I was gonna make a few comments, but you know what, man? No, no, my, you know, no, no, no. I'm gonna change my direction now. My new mission is to get you to come up with a gaming moment of a game you actually like, because I think uh, I think you're doing our audience a disservice, man. Like, you know, they, I think they want to hear. Like, for example, I know you got some Nintendo ge- uh, gems in the cut that you play. I know that. Right? I haven't I haven't been able to get into any of those games in a minute, man. Don't oh. have the time. Oh man, hey, the thing that. with. Hold on. The, the 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 thing is when you get older and this is for our younger audience just to not look forward to this moment but when you get older you got more responsibilities and that takes away from your time on the game and so now when i get on the game it's more in a sense it's by um design like i have a purpose and the purpose is just to chill with my my boys when i'm online so that's all it is now so like before i had my alone time and used to have enough time just to play whatever i wanted to but now i only get like two three hours so i'd rather just vent while i'm on the mic with some of the people you know that i chill with and we'll play some things together so i'll so, play whatever they play so you know what the remedy of that is star mm-hmm. just challenge kid again at work with another smash bros Challenge. Ah. and that could be the gaming moment right there because uh i think you got some get back that's lined up well th- that can happen but I- i'd rather wait for the switch pro to come out and then we can start that that rival again all right are you uh so. trying to put it off yes for now i haven't played like, i haven't played smash bros in in a minute so i don't even, i don't even want to even attempt this until i have put some practice into it I haven't played in a while either. Yeah, but I have a I have this feeling that 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 timing that you don't have versus the time I didn't have doesn't matter. You will automatically still beat me because yeah, I don't know the last time we did um, play, you were good and you didn't play that much then. So I don't know, man. I don't want to come out on the second you know second go around still losing. So I'm gonna put some effort on. This is like Creed three. I'm 
I'm practicing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, <laughs> we'll just have to meet you on your grounds. Maybe like Mortal Kombat or something. Maybe we'll have to figure out. Oh, jump in y'all there. ain't going to, they are not going to touch me on Mortal Kombat. See, so now that's the, that's the that. energy that I needed right there. Okay, Dude. cool. Challenge accepted. Yeah. Challenge accepted. <laughs> I hadn't even played Mortal Kombat in like eons. So this should be interesting. I don't want to embarrass nobody. I would probably oh, 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 just oh, wow. I'll probably decline the battles when it comes to Mortal Kombat. We can oh, do Street Fighter. Oh wow. Oh right, man. I love the confidence, man. That's 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 what that's, that's a lot right. of confidence. Yeah, man. <laughs> see, see, we, we turned this game of cred, uh the gaming moment around, man. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. So I'll leave it at that. All right, so moving so moving on <laughs> with some of the topics. What's going on with today's topics, kid? Well, uh, I guess kind of going back to uh, BP's moment, uh, the uh, new hot sexy from Bethesda, uh, what are they saying? Their uh, first new IP in like 25 years. Uh, I love that statement. It's just very funny to me. (laughs) Um, uh, Starfield has finally dropped uh, and definitely, uh, I don't know if I would say polarizing, but Definitely have a lot of people uh, like BP and, and even myself who actually are enjoying the game, think it's pretty good. And then, mm-hmm. of course, you have the people who aren't, aren't that thrilled with it um, for one reason or another, just to say that. Mm-hmm. Uh, just kind of want to take a few minutes to kind of talk about Starfield. I mean, you know, it's not every day we get a new Bethesda game, and Bethesda has had a lot of hiccups over the mm-hmm. past few years. Um, yeah. Say so this is kind of like their star of their redemption, you know? Um, and I know for me personally, I think they did a pretty good job. Uh, Starfield isn't, you know, uh, it, it definitely has issues. It's not a perfect game. I know stretch of the imagination, but um, what they put out, I, I definitely enjoyed. Uh, kind of to touch on a point you brought up earlier, BP. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually was talking with Star about this earlier today. Uh, they're playing Baldur's Gate so much. It, it kind of spoiled me, and uh, I think it'll be quite a while before a game kind of lives up to that uh, expectation for me. Mm-hmm. So, like, the writing and story so far isn't to that par of Baldur's Gate, which is, I'm not saying it isn't good in Starfield. I, I definitely ha- have some good chuckles. Um, I'm definitely interested in the story, but uh, I will just say, I, I, after playing Baldur's Gate, it's just like, when I see the choices, I see some of the options, I'm like, oh, okay, that's it. I just keep thinking, like, well, in Baldur's Gate, I could have done this. Well, in Baldur's Gate, I would have had three more options. Oh, mm. see, I see what you're saying. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Gotta set that precedent, but, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it, I'm, I'm still having fun. Um, it still is nice. And, and there are still options and choices to kind of go about the game. Uh, <laughs> funny enough, I will tell y'all. Uh, so after having so much choice and, and, and variety with uh, Baldur's Gate and trying to like talk my way out of situations and stuff like that, mm-hmm. I'm just kind of going at, down the space pirate route in uh, 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 Starfield. And I'm just kind of like just shooting first, asking questions never. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Love it. Um, that's kind of how I'm deciding to play the game. And, and so far, it's been pretty fun, actually. I, I will say it's been pretty fun. All right. Nice, nice. Okay. So, yeah. And uh, so, I mean, we can kind of go into that a little bit, too. I know I kind of spoke a lot about certain things I liked about it and everything. And I'm pretty sure there's some things that I'm sure we can point out that were things that weren't so favorable, uh, you know, like to give because I because uh, I try to look at it from both sides, both angles. You know, I think you kind of right to say polarizing, uh, maybe not as big, you know, big time as some other games in the past have been very polarizing, but. Um, nonetheless, I know there's kind of like the two side part where it's like either you really love it or you really hate it. Um, and so to kind of dive into some of the things that I looked at that I could see where people may be coming from and like not really liking it as much as one of those things being the traversal um, in space, because um, it can kind of range from like kind of a meh feeling to a, what, a, what the hell is this? kind of vibe yeah. um and then like i know for me for example even starting the game it you know it had its tutorial but i just still feel like there was a lot going on with like the different like because you have like the different uh parts of it right like the engine you got to maintain the engine speed you gotta uh yeah, do shields. like the shields and you got to sit there and kind of decipher like or not decipher but you have to like 
figure out what power you want to go where and then at any point in time. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, is this all going to be work? You know, like, how is this going to work during dog fights? But you know what I mean? Like, I don't hmm. want to have to be thinking about all this when I'm in the middle of a battle. So I was just kind of thinking well, in, that. In real know. life, you probably would have to think about all of that. So they adding this this next level of gaming where you have to be more conscious of all these different elements. I mean, I get it, but it's still at the, end of the day it's a game. So I don't want that to go too far into it. I think that's what is like it, Grant, I is think, it a game? I mean, listen, man, I would like <laughs> for it to be, you know, like I don't want it to be like Gran Turismo where they're like, hey, yeah, pay like, you know, this amount of money for this car access because it's like real life, right? You got to build up money <laughs> to buy this Lamborghini that you have your eye on. Like, dog, I don't think that's the intent of the game, man. I think it's where we can live out our fantasy. So, you know, not really get all too caught up in too much detail. So, mm. but yeah, I mean, you know, maybe there's that part of it that's appealing to people who really do like that stuff who really want to feel that way but i don't know for me it was just like okay this is kind of doing a little too much uh so i i can see that yeah just a little bit and uh honestly there was something else that came to mind that i wanted to point out that was a little bit well um, can i ask a yeah, curious yeah, question since i haven't played the game but i know all about bethesda games did they end up improving on their game engine, the gaming <laughs> engine? Because I, I know that people have always wanted Bethesda to do something different. The game looks amazing, so I know they have to be doing something different. But knowing Bethesda, I don't know. Did they just like add some of the new features, but it's still the same gaming engine from Fallout seventy six, or is this a brand new engine? So oh, we have a well, kid, Kid's income. gonna know this more. Mm-hmm. Kid's gonna know this more than I will. So I'll let Kid go. Yeah. Okay. So I, I was definitely one of the people uh, screaming that they need to get rid of their own custom engine. I think it's called the Creation Engine. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's yeah, it's the same engine that Fallout and uh, you know, Four Seventy Six, uh, I think Skyrim, uh, all these games, um, years and years and years have been used on this engine. And I, I was definitely one of those people kind of screaming at them to say, hey, look, you, it, I get what you're trying to do, but you guys need to let it go and just move on. <laughs> um, it is still on that same engine. Starfield is. It is a upgraded version of the engine. Uh-huh. Um, so I, I will tell you, I was skeptical so far. Granted, I've only put about eight hours into the game so far, so uh, nowhere near what you would put it <clears throat> put into it, but that's the game. Uh, so far, it, it's been a pretty good experience. Um, I know one of the things Bethesda is notoriously known for is their bugs. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and so far, I haven't really noticed any like really crazy bugs um, or anything like that. Any game breaking bugs or any crazy things. I, I do say that I did see a clip today where there is a shop um, on a particular planet. And if you go and if you there's like a puddle right outside the vendor or right outside the shop that you can interact with and it has the entire vendor's inventory. So <laughs> it, no. it does still have that, but there's the jank to it. You know what <laughs> I mean? It definitely is still a, but there's the game, but uh, so far uh, it's been running pretty well. Like I said, very little uh, bugs uh, right now. I don't think I've had a single crash again, not super far into the game. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it, it is still that same engine, but it is better. I will say, um, However, if I have to look forward at, you know, Elder Scrolls 6, Starfield 2, Fallout 5, whatever, you know, comes out next from Bethesda, I'm still going to say, hey, maybe switch to a different engine. You know, yeah. there's a reason more and more game developers are doing that. Even uh, CD Projekt Red, um, they have came out and said that Cyberpunk 2077 is the last game on their custom engine and they are now moving over to Unreal Engine. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. I'm, nice. I'm glad that because I was just about to bring that up, man. Like Starfield would be such an amazing experience on the new Unreal Engine. Yeah. I just, yeah. yeah. It, I literally just thought that. I was like, man, that would have been so great. Okay. And, you know, if, I, if I had to look forward, had to look into the stars, as they say, <clears throat> you know, I would say, hey, maybe, maybe move on to another engine. I mean, mm-hmm. it just, Long term, it might be better, but yeah, you know, but as as I like to do their own thing, but it's so far been a pretty decent experience for me. Nice, nice. And you know, Star, one thing I thought of that you would really love about the game the looting, man. Okay, 
I was like, that would be right, right up your so, alley. I was sitting there thinking so of if they, mm-hmm. Oh, I was going to say, so if they add the co-op with that looting, I'll be all for it. Well, I don't know about co-op. I don't think they got plans to do co-op with it, but... <laughs> But I was just, I, hey man, come on! Like I, I just felt like it'd be nice because, like, I was in one of the people's homes. Um, I forgot what planet I was on, but I just remember just taking all their stuff, thinking, you know, Star would really like this. He's he's a looter. He's a looter for sure. Because I know all the times in Destiny One, you would run off off a mission and collect stuff. And hey man, y'all get this chest over here. So Destiny, I thought, oh, you would love this. Destiny One Warframe. Um, what's the other game we used to always play? Um, It'll come back to me. But, but yeah, I am the looter in the group. But again, it has to have the co-op. That's, oh, that that's is the good thing about Bethesda games. Uh, they fully support mods. And I know one of the big mods, I, I don't know, I stopped following the development of it, but uh, there was a big mod going around. I think it was called Skyrim Together or something like that. And it basically, it was adding co-op in Skyrim. So uh, nice. Maybe, maybe one day there'll be a mod for uh, co-op Starfield, potentially. Now the question would be: With PlayStation Five or the Xbox consoles, would they allow the mods to be um, accessible, or just on PC? Yeah, actually, um, on Xbox, uh, I can't remember. I think it might be uh, some of the newer games. They do have a way to uh, install and download mods. Um, from uh for for these games now it, it does work slightly different than on pc um typ- mm-hmm. typically uh on pc mods are usually free you just uh go download the mod install it and boom you have the mod well what they do on and i, I don't remember if it's on playstation but i know for sure it's on xbox uh i don't know if they still call it this but it's like the creation club or something like that i remember makes- that yeah, and, and basically it's paid mods. So they kind of like curate the mods and, and they pick the best ones and they make sure it works with the game and it's a legit mod and, you know, it's functional and it, it, it has value or whatever. Uh, and you can straight up download it and it'll work with your game and everything. But you do have to actually pay for it. Um, mm-hmm. So it, it does exist. Uh, but also keep in mind, these are special curated mods by Bethesda themselves. So for instance, like that Skyrim together, that might not be one that they want to pick up and support. So it might not actually be like on Xbox or PlayStation. Well, it would definitely be on PlayStation, but on Xbox. Um, so there is that aspect. No. Or you could just get oh, a PC. Maybe. Hmm. No, that that's not happening. That's but yeah, so cool. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so well, Starfield. All- Starfield is sounding pretty pretty nice. Yep. Uh, yeah, the mods, uh, you mentioned, uh, it's funny you mentioned the mods, kid, because uh, I saw something where apparently there was some kind of thing going on where Nexus mods out there had r- apparently removed some mods that went to try to remove the pronoun part. So I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, it was like they banned it or whatever. Like, you know, I was just reading about it earlier. Um, I think I was reading off of Reddit, actually. But yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I won't go into it, you know, uh, not right now, but it was, uh, it was funny to me. Only just funny because it's mods. You know, because it's mods. You know, it's like, I just thought it was funny. Yeah, you brought that up. Mods are, uh, mods are incredible. I love mods. It's one of the best things about PC gaming. And uh, uh, I love games that support and endorse mods fully. And Baldur's Gate 3 is actually one of those developers. I'm sorry. I know I keep talking about them. Nice, nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Let's, let's give it up for Baldur's Gate. Yeah, that you feel better, kid? Quick, quick side note. I think uh, my current plan uh, is to uh, let's just say six months to a year from now, when I finish all my other playthroughs of Baldur Gate Three that I'm doing right now, I want to pick it back up. Like I said, uh, several months down the road, uh, and play it again with a uh, modded out experience. Because right now I'm just playing it vanilla, no mods, just the way the game is made. Uh, but the next time I, when I go revisit it again down the road, I do want to just like install a bunch of like mods and just kind of completely change up the experience nice nice okay but uh you know playstation is making it really hard for us to have any kind of experience guys and oh and that's because uh I good old sony said so, sony said they need they need some more money from us y'all they said it, it ain't enough <laughs> oh so it's just really it hard enough. out there from uh, it's hard out here from huh what are they talking about oh it's 
man, it, it's hard for them, you know, to 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 sell all these consoles, make all this money. Yeah, man, it's crazy, man. It's it, know, all that stuff from, adds up. From the the increase of the of the, of the price of games from sixty to seventy, you know, I, they said, you know what, that's not enough. We need more, 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 man. That's the way it goes. So, what what, what are we talking about more? So, if you have PlayStation Plus, the annual plan the price is going up mm. so mm. uh if you have the essential plan it's going to go from 60 to 80 if you have the extra plan it's going from 100 to 135 mm-hmm. and here's the real fun one if you have the premium plan it's going from 120 which already is crazy mm-hmm. to 160 160 mm. And this is again for the yearly plan, uh, but that is a uh, oh, oh. Nice, it's a nice jump there, man. With like a, I think, what thirty thirty something percent jump. I'm bad at math right it's now. A, <laughs> it's a pretty high increase, you know, and, and just kind of, I came out of nowhere too, if I'm not mistaken. Like it just, but sure, like, hey, price is going up. But surely, kid, they can they, we be they, can we be fair? Well, before we get there, but no. surely, kid, they have something in return for that increase, right? Am I right? Like new games added, something to that nature? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let us yeah know. absolutely right. We are getting, for PlayStation Plus, we are getting the new Saints Row, which was a critical failure, and the actual studio shut down because the game was so bad. Black Desert Traveler Edition, which I think Black Desert, you can get for like 10 bucks on Steam, usually, on sale. It's like 99 cents. But hey, cool, Black Desert and Generation Zero. It's worth it. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. <laughs> yeah, that was. Oh that's a man, deal. all yeah. that value, all that value, guys. Come on, of course they gotta raise the price. Yeah, man. Saints Row alone, <laughs> man, did it for me. Sure, absolutely. Oh god, that's, hey, that's right, so. Car, here, baby, so, car. so I was say, can we be a little? Can, can, this be this will this be a little nice for a minute. I know that we <laughs> all don't want to spend no more money than we have to these days times because everything's costing more so if we wanted to not play devil's advocate because i did that on the last show i'm not gonna play devil's advocate i just want to be fair oh that's do you think that there yeah do you think that the need of them to make this increase is for a, a purpose to to do more in the future or do you feel like they are only doing a cash grab hey, I, hey you know cash what grab. i think it is a i think it is a purpose in the future you know to get i mean that yacht's not gonna buy itself you know, they got to get more yachts. Mm. You know, they got to get more you sports worry, cars. BP. Hey, you I'm just saying, worry. listen, you got to think about these things, man. You know, they got to put the extra uh, rooms to the mansion. You know, they got all these things to think about. You know, we have to really, really consider these execs that uh, cl- clearly need that money. Clearly need money for the increase. Man. Okay. So, yeah. So just because- be my kind of argument to it. Uh, if there is a reason for it, then show me the value of the price increase. I think that's all we're asking, right? I mean, I you know, they doing that. Yeah, because at the end of the day, they released this at the end of a blog that they put out stealthily. You know what I mean? <laughs> nice. Like that doesn't say confidence at all. Like if you had a game plan in place that said, hey, we have a particular reason why the prices are going up, meaning that we have plans to bring this to the table. We're bringing that to the table. Hey, you know, we may not bring like day one new title releases but we're gonna probably do it within a month or so like something to make people be like okay you know maybe we see where you're going here but nothing not literally you know, BP, nothing <laughs> you just came up with a great idea if they were if they were like hey look we gotta raise a price but if you are a subscriber just like game pass you get our first party games day one i would be totally fine with this price increase exactly tell them i get to play spider-man one or spider-man two day one Yes, Wolverine next year, day one. Yes, I would absolutely be okay with this price increase. I would say raise it even more mm. if you needed to, like yeah. bump it. Like, but it, again, it's just they raise it, and then we get nothing in return. It's like, huh? Why? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what? yeah. This leaves you puzzled. And I know so, there are people out there who would fight and say so, uh, the Xbox Game Pass is more, right? But you still get those things that you mentioned, where you get the day one titles, first party titles, yeah. and that's a big deal. I mean. So to kid's point, even if Sony was like, eh, you know, he still would have to raise more. Great. That still would be something if you added that. I mean, you, you imagine how much, 
you know, traction you would gain from that. Like that, that would be a huge deal. Yeah. I think people would be fine with it. Right. But no. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Even, sorry. Even pay wallet behind a higher tier subscription if you really wanted to. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you listen, it's at the end of the day, people are going to want to play Sony, you know, first party titles. That's just the way it is. And that would be a, a great thing. But, you know, that's just anyway, I don't want to go into too much. Star. <laughs> you go. You, you take them here, man. <laughs> I mean. I, I, I'm not playing devil's advocate because I hey man, agree with a hundred percent of what was just stated. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't have a way of, of justifying this increase, but it, it just, it does make me question if there is truly a reason behind it. Like, I don't think it's just purely greed. I think that there's something down the pipeline, but so you're saying I like, don't know what it is because they haven't. Hmm? No, no. Okay. I, I'm sorry. You can go ahead. I just, well, I just was going to like basically, you know, uh, elaborate on more what you're saying, saying you think that there's something down in the works, like you know, there's a possibility of like maybe a future project or like some new titles or some new experiences they were going to add like down the road to justify that increase. Right. That is a possibility. Exactly. Okay. I think I think that there's a possibility. I think it will, might be highlighted at some point before the holidays, but I just right now don't trust that gut feeling since they haven't hinted to anything. So I'm just leaving the door open yeah. because, you know, Sony, Sony has done some great things in the past. So, I mean, mind you, going back in the heyday when Sony offered free online gaming, you know, PlayStation, I think PlayStation 2 up to the PlayStation 3 before they start charging, if I'm correct. So it's almost like they went, they went far and above and beyond to try to make the online gaming community have a free uh, pass in a sense, just to play online together. But at some point, you know, servers and networking data and traffic, all that start costing money. So they had to start charging like Microsoft did from day one. So once they start doing that, they had to catch up on those bills. I think that they sat down with their accounting department and tried to figure out how not to uh, really hurt our pockets. But at the same time, they need this, this, this increase for something. Again, I don't know what yet. I'm just leaving the door open to a possibility that they might offer something soon. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, CEO look. needs a new mansion. They hey. always had those things. They, <laughs> they, they, but believe me, they make enough money to where more money is just greed. They don't, this, this is, I think that the greed part, we all, all of them do that. Every one of these companies do that, but for them to make this increase, Seems interesting. I think that there is something coming. Just again, Sony needs to give us more to understand so we can help us make a decision if we need to really show them the door by not supporting them and moving on to Nintendo or to Microsoft or to anything of other options. Because we shouldn't just complain about these companies. We should actually be more of a, of a, of a, um, what would I want to use for a word? As a consumer, it's it's us against them in a sense with our money. We fight with our money. So talking doesn't do anything. So all this complaining, if we're still going to buy the subscription, is going to let these companies still do what they're going to do. So like, I just feel like if we are complaining and we do have an issue, we have to talk with our wallets more than just talk. So Sony needs to understand Microsoft and Nintendo that if they ever just do things uh, to, uh, just the need for greed, and, and we understand that that's their actual goal. We need to talk with our wallets. I mean, I can get behind that for sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's kind of been the thing where, you know, I've always felt like that too, where at the end of the day, you know, we kind of get outraged, but as you say, you know, we'll just end up buying it anyway, or, you know, you know, not to say all of us, but majority of us gamers would end up just selling and buying the stuff anyway. So I actually do agree with that a lot where, you know, definitely have to take more action as opposed to talking. I mean, I think I still think that talking is important for awareness sakes, but to your point, I think if it starts hanging around the talking part so much where we just continue, like to give an example, like every Madden that comes out each year or every 2K series, uh, you know, NBA 2K yeah. that comes out, it's not the same thing. Where, yeah, it's the same situation, like to your point. Hey, you left out COD. I'm sorry. You can't, you can't think about COD, man. What, Call of Duty? Yeah. That's technically the, yeah, that, that game, same mechanics. I, and again, I don't play it enough to give to give a full insight to it. But mm. watching people play that game, it's me watching the same game. So it's like they can just kept the last game and just done DLCs. But 
Yeah. You really want the community. Yeah, thank, the thank, thank you. Yeah, I shut up. But no, no, you're good. Let you get back to your point. I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. But, you know, but you added to it. You added to the point. And honestly, it was just to reinforce your point of, yeah, just doing it, uh, taking more action with, you know, just speaking with our wallets, you know, because at the end of the day, that's really the only thing that could kind of steer this, uh, you know, yeah, you know, steer the company from doing these types of things because that's all they, they they just do. They they pretty much do what they can get away with, what they know they're gonna get away with. So yeah, I mean, I agree with that. So um, to now on uh, to that point, so that was gonna be my next question: Are we still feeling like we're gonna still uh, stay subscribed to the PlayStation Plus? Because I don't I think we all are subscribed right now, right? It's safe to say. I'm currently st- still subscribed. So how we yes. feel about it? Like, do we feel with the new price increase that that's gonna be a still a, a thing or how do we feel um now for me because i think that the amount that they increased it to is still fair for the price due to uh, again microsoft pricing is still a little bit more of an increase uh, a little bit more expensive and yet no one seems to be that an eye to that i just feel like it's still around the same so i'm not too worried yet but if this increase happens every year or I start seeing a pattern where they're just trying to, you know, play with fire and see if, if they get burned at some point, then no, I don't want to see it because I don't, I don't want to support it. If I start seeing it purely just based on greed right now, it could just be based on expenses have become, you know, more, you know, just to, to, to keep these servers, you know, running or the maintenance or so again, Microsoft, doesn't do as many first party titles as Sony. So Sony might be looking at it as we may want to be able to push more of these games, but we need a little bit more funds to do so because the research and development might cost more than other companies. It, it's so many factors, but they need to give us some more insight. Isn't so, that the whole point of selling a product that it makes a profit? Yeah, Over but the- every. But you remember now so, with these microchips and everything started becoming harder to, to get it and, and then they start coming up with new technologies that cost a little bit more to purchase and people want more money to work in these factories or want, you know, there's a lot of logistics that goes on behind, you know, behind the scenes that us as consumers, we don't really worry about until when, you know, the cost goes to us. So like now we worry because now we see the, 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 the price is increasing, but the price might be increasing due to all those challenges happening behind the scenes. So, kid, let me ask you something real quick before I kind of go back to what Star said. With the tiers for Xbox Game Pass, and correct me if I'm wrong, is it to where, like, if you're doing either the PC Game Pass or Xbox Game Console Game Pass, like, it's supposed to be, like, what, $10 or something like that, or $11 on either side? Yeah, so to kind of clarify, uh, the price increase that Xbox went through, if I'm not mistaken, it was only one tier that went up in price, okay. and it was the uh, the ultimate, which was it, it, you get the Xbox and PC Game Pass. I think it went from like fourteen ninety nine to sixteen ninety nine. Yeah, or something like okay, that. that's what yeah. I thought. Okay, all right, I just wanted to clear that up because that's what I felt like. So um, yeah, I think if you do just. Xbox Game Pass or just PC Game Pass. I think those are just nine ninety nine a month. Okay, so but not, okay, all right. So I th- and I think to that end, I think that's why people were a little bit more on the forgiving side of that um, star. I think that people were looking at it from that point of view of hey, you know, it's an increase the ultimate if for those who desire to have both the access to both the PC and the console games. Um, but also because mm-hmm. of the first party titles. So to them, it's still kind of like, hey, it's still worth it to me because I'm still having access to these first party titles day once, like Starfield, for example. Like I don't have, I didn't have to worry about shelling out the, I guess, what, 60, 70 bucks for it? 70. Oh, 70, my bad. I'm sorry. 70. Yeah, I, I always kind of go around trying to figure out if Xbox caught up to the 70 yet, but. Um, they did, yeah. unfortunately, but that, then you I figured it was a matter of time. Though. Yeah, <laughs> so, so, I, but I think to that end, I think that's why the more like, for example, I do PC Game Pass for myself, and so the way I look at it is, I still feel like it's a great deal uh, because you know I have the access to those games, you know, on day one at any point, you know. So that that's why I think that's why a lot of people are like, you know, it wasn't increased for sure, and then plus on top of that, the increase wasn't as big 
you know, a jump as what Sony's talking about, you know, because like I said, again, the Sony's jump was more of like in the 30 percent higher, a little bit higher in the 30 percent range, whereas I think Microsoft's jump was what, like less than what was the percentage, like 13 percent or something? God, I need to do better with my math right now. <laughs> <laughs> I should have had these numbers ready to go. My bad. Don't, don't look at me. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Because you said it went from the fraction. You said ultimate went from what, 12 to 16, you said? Or what was it? Or 14 I think it was 16? like it was like 14 to 16. Let me double check. Hold okay. on one second. Um, price increase. Uh, so it went from, yeah, 14.99 to 16.99. It's about $2. Okay. <laughs> oh, and then correction, the base uh game pass for console also went up from 9.99 to 10.99. So it did go up a little bit as well. Okay, so for that part. Okay, got you. Yeah, 14.99 to 16.99. Yeah, I can't find that percentage. Needless to say, it wasn't as huge as Sony's. And I think that's what caught people's eye, too. It's like, Jesus Christ. Like, <laughs> like, like, you know what I mean? Because it's like, not only are you not offering what's really going on with that, you know, um, but you just, it's just a huge jump. Like, it's a big jump. Like, it may not be seen that way for the first tier, but then when you move on to the next ones, it's like, bro, like, that's, like you said, what was it? Uh, extra it was $35 more. You know, like that's the whole thing. Other yeah. than, I mean, if you're talking about like ten, fifteen dollar increase, you know, people kind of raise their eyebrow. But I mean, thirty five dollars, man, that's like full blown deer in the headlight caught look, man. It's like it's it's a lot. And again, everybody is is looking up prices increasing for everything from food to video games to gasoline to you know healthcare. I mean, everything's it's, going up. So. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I don't think that Sony's doing anybody any, you know, service by just increasing it that much. With the first step, there's no, there's no increment steps. It's just like, bam, in your face, this is how much it's going to jump to. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah. imagine, you, y'all, yeah, could y'all imagine if like Netflix tried to pull something like that? Because they already caught flack for their increases, you know, over time. But See, imagine they did something like that <laughs> to that extent. Oh, man. I think, I, 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 yeah, I think that Sony might give their, 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 their you're like breaking up. Yeah, you're breaking up, man. Breaking up. <laughs> that's a squad that's a, something. Going. Oh, crap, I am. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, it was fine. It was like, it sounded like a nice little remix. I was like, okay, <laughs> okay, I'll roll with this. Yeah, you get a beat. Like, what in the world? I should have played a beat on yeah, here. Uh, um, I'm on the Wi-Fi, so dang it. I'm thinking I'm breaking up. It's all good. Just keep it rolling. What were you going to say? <laughs> oh, no. Nah, I think that we need to move on so that I don't okay, keep yeah. on sounding like a, a remix. You're good. We can move on. All right. <laughs> so the last thing I... I just want to ask y'all a question for the last topic. Um, So we are finally, finally, finally getting the long, at least for me, long-weighted <laughs> expansion to Cyberpunk 2077, Phantom Liberty. I cannot wait. It's going to come with a lot of changes, a lot of new things. Uh, And I think this will really be what Cyberpunk should have been day one. Uh, Okay. Part of what's going on with the expansion is, so it's kind of a two-part situation, right? They're dropping an expansion, which is going to have changes and improvements and a whole new bunch of stuff, you know, new story, new zone, blah, blah, blah. But also, there is a big patch coming out for the game, which will be totally free. That's going to have a lot of changes and improvements and a, a lot of goodness to it. And, and and from what people are saying and reporting, it's going to pretty much revamp the game. A, a lot of people are calling it Cyberpunk 2.0. Um, so the kind of question I want to propose or just kind of ask you guys is, how do we feel about um, redemption arcs for games? You know, do we feel like if it releases terribly uh, day one, is it just dead and gone and we should never give it a chance? Or if the developers stick with it, give it updates, give it patches and work on it, you know, and maybe, you know, down the road, they completely overhaul the game and, and, and hopefully fix all these issues. Is, is it worth going back and revisiting these games or once they come out and they're broken, we just throw it away and don't never pay attention to it again. Wow. Um, so you know, that's a hard one to answer, I can, but go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I'm going to say my personal opinion is 
when it comes to games, you kind of have to kind of like have them release when the iron is hot so you can strike it while the iron's hot. Like you can't just advertise, market a game for years that is coming out at this certain time and build up all this hype. And then when the game comes out, it flops because then you are not doing any more marketing after that. All you're doing once it flops is just saying to everybody, oh, we promised that we will fix it. That's not marketing. That's hurting your brand even more. So it's like damage I think control, it hurts. Yeah, it's like that yeah, damage controls. So it's like, I don't think that helps to, to, to get the back the same number. So you might get back your, your, your fans. You might get back the people who all, that have faith in you from day one. But for everybody else, they may have moved on. They're not looking back. They always moved on. That, cause that's, the, that's just the gaming world. That's just your attention span. It's like we all got ADD when it comes to gaming. I mean, if you can't keep my attention, I'm going to move on to the next game. And that's the thing. Like if you can't strike when the iron's hot, you missed your chance. So just work on your next game and don't make the same mistakes. That's, that's the lesson that should be learned. Don't try to just come up with a patch and make it as nice as it should have been when it was promised and think that people are going to all jump back on board a hundred percent. Cause you're not going to get all those same people back again. So before you answer BP, I want to kind okay. of follow up with what he just said. Yeah. So I guess two questions. One, are you saying uh, you won't give a game a second chance or you won't, if you heard it was bad at launch, you won't pick it back up. Even if I won't first now. So, okay. <laughs> And and then so uh so do you think developers should if they release a broken game, should they just give up and, and not try to fix it and just move on to the next game? Is that oh no, they it's by all fairness, they should fix that game, but they should not expect everybody to just jump back onto it. Okay. Okay. All right. Interesting, interesting. Uh, this man's like, you got one chance and one chance. Only. You, got, you got, got one chance, man. I feel like that was an eight-mile song. So many wasn't games it? out there. Wasn't that like eight-mile song or something like that? Oh. Lose yourself or something? Yeah. <laughs> Just about. What about you, BP? Uh, okay. Yeah, are you a little more forgiving? So this is why I said it was difficult to answer because – and starting probably knows where I'm going with this because I'm a man that likes to believe mm-hmm. in different. Well, I'm a man that likes to believe in different factors, right? I think factors, uh, pretty much, you know, kind of determine everything. So let me explain what I mean. So one thing we gotta talk about is like studios, Stu- the studio, the, the the say the studio that did it that matters, right? So like you look at CD Projekt Red, they had a great track record the whole time. And sure, they were hyping up cyberpunk and did all that stuff and only to kind of deliver something that was underwhelming and definitely broke some promises that were made. But they did have a great, you know, reputation. And I'm not saying to say that this is just automatically like, oh, forgive them, blah, blah, blah. But it's like you have more of a I think you have more of a forgiving base um, when you pledge to do these things and you deliver on them, like, you know, fixes, patches, whatnot, and blah, blah, blah. Um, So that can affect the situation, the outcome. Uh, then what will affect it is the timing, you know, like how long is that redemption story going to go for like, you know, or is it even going to ever happen? You know, like if it's something where people can reasonably say, okay, you know, maybe about a year or so makes sense, or maybe about three months makes sense. You know, I guess it really kind of depends on what people feel like, you know, like how egregious was the wrong, you know, like how much, how fast does it need to get rectified? Uh, Were there issues with like the refund process? Um, You know, like, are there additional parts like are you going to over deliver on some of those things you promised as far as the patch fixes and anything else you promise like new, new work you know new content that's for free you know like all those things kind of uh affect the matter as well um and then you have mm-hmm. what's that uh, i was just agreeing with you yeah. oh yeah. my bad i'm bad. uh and then you have like um like it kind of ties back to what i said with studio but then you have track record you know like is this you know, like I mentioned, CD Projekt Red had great will, whereas like an EA, not so much, you know, so it's like. <laughs> yeah, Anthem 2.0. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anthem Next or whatever they called it. Right. So, so that's why. on that. Exactly. 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 So it's like, that's another thing that I kind of look at where it comes to that. So it just really, it really truly depends, man. It really depends on the circumstance. It really depends on what happened. You know, how bad was everything? You know, was it really a buggy, terrifying mess? Was it. 
game breaking to the point where systems were bricking, you know, um, losing save files, you know, paid wall stuff. Like it just, it really, really, truly depends on the whole, whole ordeal. Uh, what was communicated, you know, before, uh, it, it just depends. It depends. Um, so, but law, all that to say, I do believe in redemption, but under the right circumstances. Um, you know, I, hmm. I truly, truly believe that if it's somebody like CD Projekt Red who is like going to come flat out and say, look, we screwed up. Um, you know, we did this X, Y, Z. We put some, put out something that we knew misrepresented what we put out in like one of the show and showcases, you know, our bad. Um, we're working hard to try to, you know, to do the fixes and all that stuff. And we're going to deliver something that should have been from the get go. I think because of the goodwill they had prior that kind of earns them a good kind of starting point, you know, and I say starting point because, you know, they might say all that and then later down the line, don't do any of it too. So, but I think from this standpoint, based on this news that you're breaking kid, that does show that they are, you know, um, they, they, that they've stayed dedicated to something that look, it, probably a lot of people already forgot about, you know what I mean? And I think that just speaks volumes to that dedication that, Hey, at least they're doing that. Whereas, Something like Anthem got forgot about, no matter despite all the promises of, like you said, Anthem Next and <laughs> 2.0 or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, you know that was just done deal. And I think a lot of people even saw through that. Like, yeah, you're saying that, but come on, like, you know, you're EA. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just I'm, like, I remember. I don't know if you remember. I remember talking to you when they announced that, and I was, I told you flat out, I was like, yeah, EA ain't gonna let that happen. You did, yeah. I remember that. I remember that vividly. And so, <laughs> so, and I wasn't far from it. I was like, you know, the track that gets back to the track record. It's like we've seen y'all in action. So it's like yeah. you gotta, you know, you can't hold us to it like that. That to see that your goodwill's not there, so we don't trust you. So yeah, Absolutely. so it just depends. I like that. I like that. Okay. Stuff. Okay. Yeah. But not to take anything from you, Star, because I know there's plenty of people who like that. Like, look, I done spent my hard on money, bro. You have one chance. You didn't, you got, and then you got on this mic and you fumbled. <laughs> it's like the freestyle wasn't hidden. The rap battle, you lost. We done with you. So I get it, man. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was kind of, uh, I tried, man, but y'all, y'all kind of let, uh, let me down that hill. But okay. <laughs> But yeah, that, that, but that was yikes. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> but, but I was thinking, having ADD as a gamer. Um, technically, people who move on to new games it's hard to go back to older games because you have to then remember the mechanics again. You have to, you know, it's like you have to start from from the beginning when you stop playing a game for a while, and that and a lot of people don't have the time for doing all of that. So I'm saying you, you do want to strike when the, when the iron is hot with these right. games when you release mm -hmm. these games because you know. People don't have that kind of time just to just stop what they're doing, go back to something that was already done, but was done right. So I, that's that's my feeling is that no, it's, 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 sometimes it's too late in the gaming industry to try to fix your wrongs. Yeah. And to add to what you're saying, you know, Star, like, again, you have because I think you said earlier competition. So, you know, by that time yeah. that comes around, you have like 10, 20, 30 other games that's come out that people have already invested into and looked into. and you know what I mean? Not to mention other games on Horizon they're excited about. So, you know, it's it is a it's a it's a tough one. It is really tough. You absolutely can't get lost yeah. le le uh, left in the dust if you're not careful. Back. If my answer wasn't obvious, I'm all for uh, <laughs> redemption arcs. Uh, but mainly, it, mainly it, it does kind of depend, like what you said, BP on the specific studio. Um, yeah. it, it has to be a studio that I I. I believe in that i think we'll actually put in the work to do it and even from day one uh although i was disappointed with cyberpunk and cd project red I, I knew they were the studio type of studio to put in the work to make it right um mm -hmm. and granted i i, I will say a couple of years back they made vast improvements to make the game far better um so you, you could have you know a couple of years ago you could have picked it up and played it and had a good experience um mm -hmm. but it is nice to kind of see this big major overhaul that they are doing. Um, also, it does make me a little bit sad because this is pretty much the final update for Cyberpunk until we get the sequel in 10, 20, 30 years, however long it takes to make. So let me ask I, you, I am a little sad. Let me ask you something. So, number one, number one, did they ever confirm they were looking at the sequel or that's just something they didn't really kind of talk? Cause I know there's probably still focus on this, so it probably wouldn't make sense to uh, talk about a sequel. Yes, they... Um, 
uh, several months ago, they had uh, they announced a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I, I think it was in the announcement where they um, said they were moving over to Unreal Engine. Oh, okay. Um, but essentially, they announced several project blah, several projects. There is um, a new Witcher game coming out soon. I heard about that. Yep. And then there's also a new Witcher trilogy, which is going to be pretty cool. I'm extremely excited about that. Mm. I'm ready to hop back into the Witcher. Okay. Um, but also, they they did announce a sequel to Cyberpunk. It's just like a project uh, code name. I think it's code name Orion right now. Got you. Um, so they, yeah, they, yeah, it is confirmed. So yeah, they really need to knock this uh, update out the park then, in order to get people to, to even trust the Cyberpunk two thing. So yeah, okay, I can see well, why they would want to. Do I mean, that I'll work. say I'll say for the most part, a lot of people have. I won't say necessarily. I'll, I'll say a lot of people. Uh, they've made up a lot of people. I feel like they made up to a lot of people. Uh, Kind of like we were talking about not too long ago, BP, uh, mm-hmm. with the resurgence. Because uh, today is a year ago since the uh, anime uh, Cyberpunk Ed- Edge Runners came out, um, and that saw a huge influx of players, new and uh, returning players, going back to Cyberpunk. Um, mm, and gotcha. It, anytime I am kind of hearing about Cyberpunk these days, it is in a much more positive, uh, uh, positive outlook. So I, I think for the most part, they've kind of done a, a good job of clearing up the mistake they made at launch but um okay. it definitely would be the final like stamp of approval people will probably need to to see how they feel about this sequel coming out in a couple of years okay so, so last are you thing. saying that they're they're hmm? no no wait, oh wait. i was just gonna just add to this uh redemption story so when i remember cyberpunk first being a major um player for me because again it's only a single player not a big fan of single players but they showed that 15 minute, I think it was gameplay, maybe 30 minutes of gameplay and come to find out that none of that was actual gameplay. Like the way that they just, just deceived their, their, their fans with that whole thing to me, I don't think they never gave the apology that will allow me to even trust them again. So I, I just felt like with them, they done some dirty stuff. <laughs> So it's like for me, the redemption story, they haven't done a redemption story yet because a, a apology should be one of the first things that needs to be achieved. And have they ever apologized for that deception? I'll have to get you to show me what you're talking about specifically because every- the first 30 minutes of the nope, the first 30 minutes that they revealed of that game that they showed, I think was, I don't know, I don't know they released on YouTube or their own channel. I'm not sure. None of that was actual game play. talking about the but first like, game 45 that, minute demo they released cor- like, way correct correct so that was that was gameplay N- no it wasn't they already they said that wasn't none of that was yeah, it, that's why when you got the game it that it, it was nowhere near close to what it was it's literally the opening mission granted some things are changed like in the uh demo there is third person that is no longer in the game and um, I think some of the destruction or something in the environment was changed, but mm-hmm. no, that that I think that we might be talking about two different things then, because yeah, that was already they ha- they didn't apologize for that, but I remember that being a huge thing for a minute. Because no, they never everything they showed was in the game. <laughs> the problem was is that what they were showing was on like high end PCs. That's what I'm gonna add. Say in the game, yeah. On, I- uh, Xbox One and PS4, which could not meet that expectation. Yeah, that, and that's what I was going to say because mm-hmm. that was the same thing with uh, Watch Dogs. I, th- I believe they ran it on the, like, the high end stuff. <laughs> so when people yeah. got it on, like the, uh, what was it, PS4 and, and Xbox? Yeah, one? PS4. Yeah, it was it was uh, it was the same thing where it was just like, wait a minute, this is oh. nowhere near what oh, you man. showed. And they were like, oh, yeah, you know, like, I don't think they apologized for that at all because it was just like, you know, it was like running on the high end stuff. Like, you know what I mean? So that's like not what I just went and looked it up. I just went and looked up this to see if I was just making this up. But no, they are this articles from Game Informer from Forbes. Basically, that it was a fake demo. That those that game that that beginning part of the game, none of those cut scenes, that stuff was actual gameplay. They they yeah, that was an issue. And it was forty eight minutes. Yeah, you have to send me that because it. That's really the first mission of the game. I, and I remember because I, as I was playing it, I was like, oh, yeah, this was in the demo. Like, it's literally the 
first mission of the game. So, I mean, that was, it was in the you game. Can, Granted, you can it. it might have not looked as good as it did in that demo, or, you know, they might have changed some UI things and things here and there, but that it, everything was shown was in the game, essentially. Except for like some cut mechanics. I think you could hack into somebody uh, mid combat, which wasn't in the game, but it was real gameplay. I just sent it to you all, so I'm not sure if we can add it to the, you know, the gamer notes or anything on the site. I mean, I can definitely, if you want me to add it, you know, I can definitely do it for the audience so they want to see what you were saying. Then, yeah, I'll definitely put that in the show notes. Let me see if I can put that in my notes here. So, okay. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, but, you know, anyway, at the end of the day, um, I mean, I don't think that's something that's new anyway for gaming companies to do that kind of stuff. I mean, Killzone back then, they I forgot the damn name of the company, but they did the same thing with Killzone 2, you know, when they came to the PS2, which theirs actually was worse, though, because they literally took and did like cinematics and passed us off as saying this is actual gameplay when it really wasn't at all, like no bits and pieces of it. I mean, at, you know, p- period were, were uh, game, actual gameplay. So I just say that just to say that most gaming companies are really just not most i won't say most but there are just some out there that just tend to do that you know that that you know false advertising and stuff like that but yeah mm. it's just not I, I guess i'm saying all that to say it's nothing new it's not nothing they're going to really apologize for you know what i mean unless it's like really 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 and, bad and, or something. And, they sh- and, and that's why the redemption story won't work for me because i need to see the maturity level in a company to say oh we we effed up we apologize if they don't, they're not going to do it, then why am I supporting them? Because they're calling me stupid. That's basically what they're doing at that point. And yeah. they did apologize, by the way, uh, after all. The they meeting, did? The, the president. Yeah. Yeah, they came out. And, oh, cool. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mentioned that earlier. Too, all right, so the there we go. So the case closed. Case closed. Oh, you did? I'm sorry. I was it's probably looking good, up man. that article when you were saying that at the time. I know. I, <laughs> hey, I'm about to say, I know I don't so matter. Case so case closed. Okay. If they apologize, case closed. Yeah, I know I don't matter. It's okay. <laughs> yikes <laughs> so all right well cool cool you know another one in the books gentlemen unless i had anything else to add mm, mm, no oh. that i can oh. think of oh, i know that we wanted to talk about consoles oh yeah that can be Dang another it. time <laughs> that's a nice little prelude for the next episode <laughs> Hopefully we remember them. Mm-hmm. So yeah, man. But hey, man, let's okay, give it up, man. We did another great episode. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Hey, I don't know, man. I love that air horn. I'm sorry. That's, that's here to stay. Mm. I think that our uh, listeners need to vote on that air horn. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag silence BP with the air, uh, air, air horn. Got it. Might have to. Nice. I can, Hey, like let God. me give you this one warning because I, I <laughs> this this happened in real life. So back in the day, I lived I lived in New York a long time ago. We had this channel, this news channel, where the weatherman, when he gets these letters in, he reads the letters live on air, and if it's someone's birthday, he would yell, "Nice!" Through that camera, "Happy birthday!" Blah 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 to whoever. It's a right. little, nice little announcement ever my father was so upset of hearing this guy screaming at nine o'clock at night every night that he rolled in to that channel and the next week they stopped doing it they completely stopped doing it so i'm just saying i'm just saying that air horn might sound great Man. it might sound amazing just this might just but some people may not want to you know hear it every time yeah. well, i don't want to upset i don't want to upset papa star man i'm trying i'm curious as to what he put in that letter exactly man i want to see, see what he put I in that get letter it from that dude okay i want to yeah i need to know that letter man I, you got like evidence of that letter somewhere because i need to read what he said I, 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 he whatever he hey, said must have put the fear I, I, in god I, I, in them it, it had, had to. to it had to man <laughs> it had to that got stopped wow completely that's crazy. Yeah, there's definitely something that went down. Like that's legendary. That uh, you need to. I hope he <laughs> took that letter and like put like put in like a plaque and just hung it up somewhere. Like you know what I mean. Just as a as a trophy. That's a trophy right there, man. Look, look. R- whether you say whether that was right or wrong, you have to say that was a trophy because like that's not a yeah. lie. That's not something that you could be typically do. Yeah, man. It's a it's a memory for me. So exactly. I, I'm guessing it go. was impactful. <laughs> <laughs> Those poor people, man. I wonder, man. I wonder what their psyche's like now. I wonder if they're getting therapy after that. 
It's like we were doing a good thing, Ugh. and then the letter came in, man, and my whole world got turned upside down. God, that's crazy. Let me tell you, man, letter writing changes the world. That's why we always should write to our congressmen and women, because <laughs> those letters actually do matter. So. Honestly, I mean, that's kind of true with the, what Trump sending Kim Jong those letters. Oh, so, I mean, that, uh, yeah. 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 So, yeah, I guess the so. whole, whole romance romance started ever since. Yeah. <laughs> so all of a sudden, people to your point. All right, we started, dragging. Yeah, yeah, we are dragging. I'm about to, see, I'm glad you stopped me because I was about to go down that road, man. Like, that's, I tell you, my brain, that's how it works. You see, kid checked out. He probably went and started playing ball. Oh, yeah. He, he checked out, man. He <laughs> He's like, man, I don't know what y'all talking about. You got a good, um, no, no. I'm good. All right. Well, uh, on that note, I want to thank everybody for listening to us ramble for a little bit of time tonight. Uh, hope we were at least a little bit. Okay. All right. Hey, man, that was a compliment, man. Go keep going, man. <laughs> at, least, at least it wasn't the end horn. Um, hope we were a little bit entertaining I gotta stop for y'all. On the air and, uh, you know, we look forward to uh, chatting with y'all again soon. All yes, right. indeed. Yes, indeed. As usual, you can find us on the pod page dot com slash gamer credits it basically points you to all the different uh, streaming platforms you can check this episode and all the other episodes out so we appreciate it if you jump in on that but yeah let us know you know what you think and let us know uh topics you want us to talk about or if there's anything you liked or disliked about these topics we went over uh definitely let us know it'll help us a lot so um but yeah until uh next time that's uh i guess that's it all right well love stay safe all right y'all let's get it peace